What you're viewing is what a fish sees when it approaches one of Jay Fair's trolling flies. They're called woolly flashers and are the most lifelike imitations of the real thing you'll find. Nothing, not plugs, not spinners, not spoons, look more alive in the water than Jay's flies. The entire lure pulses and from every angle comes a new, vibrant profile. When rigged and presented properly, they'll outproduce any other method for big fish. Whether in lakes or reservoirs, or for trout or other game species, pulling flies is the ticket for catching more and bigger fish. The most widely known secret in fishing is the quote we hear every week from the Bass Boys, keep the lure in the strike zone. In this video, Jay Fair shows you the system you can use with the gear you already own to be in the strike zone all the time. The system is easy to learn, but it's not simple. And to understand it, you should know a little about the man who created it, Jay Fair. Tell you what you need to do, what I've taught myself to do, whether I'm fly fishing or trolling flies, you need to live and breathe that fly you need to turn yourself into that fly. And you're down there and you're that fly and you know the more action you get on the fly, the more fish you're gonna catch. And you're constantly, you're, you're totally concentrated on what's happening back there. He is known as Mr. Eagle Lake by the writers of Northern California, named so after his home water where he's lived and worked. His reputation as a fisherman, guide, fly tire, and craftsman of tying materials has made him a legend. The fly fishing world has long been open to Jay's innovative colors, materials, and flies. Most can be seen in his no-nonsense fly tying video series. Jay has spent the better half of a century developing his trolling techniques and flies for catching big fish. As you've seen, he admits readily to thinking like a fish, and some say he does it pretty well. Doing more than just thinking about it, Jay has developed the products that allow anyone to troll his woolly flashers successfully. Packaged and ready to go are the various lines and flies that can be used with any fly, spin, and bait casting gear. Jay Fair's Surefire Trolling System for Big Fish is just around the corner. It's your chance to spend a day in the boat with Jay Fair. For the video, we've teamed Jay up with Dave Wolfley. Dave is an avid sportsman who's never fished Jay's system before. The tape will all be easier to understand if you remember to do just like Jay does and think like a fish. Most everything he says and does when on the water is with fish in mind. Thinking like a fish is just the first of many things to remember when you fish with Jay Fair. Big, big trout are different. You can take a two or three pound trout and he's not the same trout as a seven or eight pound trout. The big, big trout are loners. They're very territorial. Apparently they get up early too, huh, Jay? Oh, yes. They love <laughs> early mornings. They don't have any sun in their eyes. They feel secure at daylight in the morning. And they just like this time of day. Most animals do. Trout, animals, human beings, they're not that far apart. We may think they are, but they're not. Okay, let's just sort of reverse this thing and say we're fishing for people. And where would you go this time of morning to get people? In bed. I would go to a restaurant 
the majority of them, the restaurants are full of people this time of morning, so you go to a restaurant. Same way with fish. If you want to catch fish, you go to their restaurant. You go to their feed bed, because that's where they're going to be. Now, as the day prolongs, and the weather starts heating up, and it starts getting hot, I would go to a place to catch people where it's air conditioned. You're going to find the majority of these people in this air conditioned place. Now if it starts to get winter and it starts getting cold, now you want to go where the building's heated. The same way with the trout. You want to follow these temperatures around. As temperature changes, trout change. If you didn't catch it all, that was your first lesson in big trout behavior from Jay Fair. We've learned from hanging out with him for a while, you have to listen quick if you want to catch everything Jay has to say. First off, he talked about big trout being loners. Jay's looking for single fish. If he's catching lots of small ones, fish under three pounds, he knows he isn't where he wants to be. You don't usually find big fish in schools. A single fish coming to the surface might indicate to Jay it could be one worth working. Jay also pointed out that big fish are aggressive. This makes them excellent targets for trolling flies. They'll come from some distance to protect their area and will feed on whatever intrudes it. Big trout are very early risers, just like Jay. He prefers to be on the water in the dark and fishing at first legal light. Trout have no eyelids and are extremely sensitive to the sun. Clouds and even wind cut down light penetration, making them excellent times to find big fish. Jay will look for big trout on the feed beds and near structure. Look for concentrations of minnows in and around weed beds, rock piles, and ledges. Much like a deer coming to its favorite field at night, big fish head to the same feeding spots again and again. Find out what your big fish are feeding on, find out where it is, and you'll start catching bigger fish. As important as feed is to big trout, temperature can play nearly as great a role. Big trout prefer deep, cooler water in the summer and shallow, warmer water in the winter. Every species has its ideal temperature range. In his first few thoughts on big fish, Jay points out they're spooky, very spooky. His whole trolling system is centered around not scaring off the big fish. Jay's approach is to run his flies well back from the boat, over a hundred feet. Then move them as carefully as possible into the strike zone. Scaring off big fish before we have the chance to catch them is something Jay believes we do way too often. If we had one of them big party boats in front of us right now, and say he's trolling ahead of us about a hundred yards, our chances of catching fish would just diminish. We just, it would be almost impossible to catch fish following another great big boat because he's already scared them to death. They spooked, they don't want to bite. The way it is right now, we've got this whole little stretch to ourselves. We'll go into them very quiet and your chances just multiply by the hundred percent. I got one on right now. He picked it up very, very easy. It just felt like a little drag on the line. And I hooked him right down near the boat. If I'd have jerked up high in the air, I probably wouldn't have got this fish. So he was one of those early guys in the restaurant? Yes, yes, he's in here feeding. We're, it's gonna be a little tough fishing this morning. These fish are in here feeding on these minnows, uh, like we seen back in the lake a little further. Uh, as we run over them with this boat, why it scares them. And uh, so we're not catches as many as we should, but if you had a little riffle on the water, they wouldn't be scared anymore. I see if you get to reeling real fast like this, you get to bounce in your rod, and that's what you don't want to do. You just want to take it real easy on him. You got plenty of time. Just take it slow on him. If you get to reeling, jerking your rod around, reeling real fast with your handle, the rod gets to bouncing and you lose them. He's getting pretty tired. He's not a real big fish, probably three pounds, maybe a little better. Uh, 
he's still got a little fight left. We don't want to fight him down too, too hard because we want to make sure that they revive and you can turn them loose. And they're, these fish are very healthy. There's a lot of oxygen in the water right now. So they're not real hard to release. Oh, he's beautiful. Just absolutely a picture of health. Ooh, keep him out of that prop. Good job. Isn't that a beautiful trout? Look at the markings on him. Look at his fins. Absolutely perfect. All the little dots are just absolutely perfect on him. We want to get him back in the water before he gets tired out. It's one thing you don't want to do. If you're going to release him, try not to put him in a net. There he goes. The rig the J trolls consists of several parts. The most obvious are his trolling flies. You could use other flies to fish Jay's system. However, it's hard to imagine anything that looks more lifelike in the water than woolly flashers. We'll get into the flies more later. Before the flies comes 15 feet of leader. In this case, Jay is using eight pound because of the size of the trout and because the weeds are so thick here. 15 feet of leader may seem like a lot, but remember, this system is designed to avoid spooking fish. With a longer leader, it's less likely fish will spot your main line. Just take your regular leader material. <coughs> we use eight pound test leader. You take 15 feet, what we were using this morning, 15 feet of this leader material. Next in the system is 18 pound test lead core line. Jay uses 15 feet to take his fly down to between six and eight feet. Jay controls the fly's exact depth by the speed of the boat and the course he trolls. Attributes of lead core line that make it a great way to weight a trolling system are that it doesn't easily snag up on weeds or rocks, it doesn't kill the action of the lure or fly, and it holds its depth, not sinking or lifting too fast. If you think your target species is deeper than six to 10 feet, you can add more lead core line to the rig. Lead core line changes colors every 30 feet, and for each color, you can increase your depth another six feet. So now we have 15 feet a liter. In front of it, we're gonna put 16 feet of 18 pound test lead core. The reason we're using 18 pound test lead core, because they make many different types, is that we know the depth of 18 pound lead core and how deep it will get us. If we went to 10 pound or 12 pound, we'd have to change our formula. The most ingenious part of Jay's system is probably the fly line. This floating fly line puts your leader behind the boat 80 to 90 feet. They don't spook the fish, and if you do run one over, the fish has a chance to swing back into the strike zone. They track outside of the boat in the wind and when trolled on a winding course. The lines are also extremely visible. Jay uses white so you know exactly where you're fishing. So we have approximately 85 feet of this line. And you're gonna ask yourself, how come we have so much of this line? We need to get back far behind the boat so that we don't spook these fishes back. When we take circles on these fish, we have our line running on the inside of the circle. If we're near the tule trolling it, those fish will come out of the tule rush and take them. So now we attach this line to the lead line. Now, behind the fly line comes a backing material. How much additional backing you put on will depend upon the type of reel you're using and its remaining line capacity. Jay likes to have as much as 50 yards of 20 pound backing on the rigs he fishes. He prefers Dacron for backing because it doesn't stretch and it's easy to work with. So the whole rig consists of about 50 yards of 20 pound test backing, 85 feet of floating shooting line, 
16 feet of 18 pound test lead core and 15 feet of leader material that consists of the whole line. Jay's trolling line system is designed to fish with his woolly flasher flies. Other neutrally buoyant lures and flies might work, but it's hard to believe any will look as enticing as Jay's creations. They just come to life when trolled properly. The right way to troll these flies, once you put them at the proper depth, is to keep them constantly in motion. Jay is looking for a smooth action. He doesn't want the fly jerking erratically. The best results come from just rolling your wrist and making small, easy circles with your rod tip. The rod should be kept low with the tip pointed down. This keeps you from moving it too much and you're in a position to set the hook if you get bit. Okay, how far back are we, Jay, and how deep do you think we're fishing? Well, we're back about 115 feet behind the boat. Our flies at this speed should be right at about seven feet. Uh, if I'd make a real sharp turn now, well, I could hook you up on the bottom. But we're going to try this depth for here just a little bit. It's only uh, 10 feet deep right here, so we're about two and a half to three feet off of the bottom. These fish aren't happy fish this morning. <laughs> happy fish are fish that bite. So, so far we've got some unhappy fish out here. There he is. Okay, oh, really? bring yours in, Dave. This is a good fighting fish. You want I'm going to steer the boat when I get it in. I'm going to tighten up, loosen up on my drag just a little bit. We're going to keep this boat moving now until uh, we get these fish away from the toolies here. We want to get out here where we can fight this fish. And I'm going to give the boat just a little bit more gas to get this thing straightened out and get him out here where we can do some good on him. Uh, Good fish. These are the most beautiful fish in the whole world. These trout here in Eagle Lake are species of all their own. Nothing else, no trout will live in here but an Eagle Lake rainbow. Uh, they live everywhere else and of course now they have them in New Zealand and Argentina and they're an excellent trout to fly fish. They just uh, they're really good fighters, as you can see. There he's coming up to the top. What do you see the color on this fish? Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and you picked him up right in the shallow water where you said, huh, Jay? Yes. Uh, they'll come back in here when they're feeding. Uh, the sun comes up real bright and it gets calm. They'll go out in a little deeper water, and when they do that, We'll probably have to go out and go a little deeper for them. We have two other rods there that we can fish up to about 20 feet deep. This is a beautiful fish here. How big is that one, Jay? Oh, I was just from looking at him, I'd guess four and a half to, I don't want to move your rod there, Dave. They're healthy, healthy fat fish. Just beautiful fish. I don't want to net him if I can keep from it because we're going to turn him loose. And uh, so I'm just going to try to get him in my hand to lift him up. Oh, these flies are deadly. We troll them all over the country. It doesn't matter where you fish. They work beautiful. I'm going to release him now. I just, they're so beautiful. Now we know the way that hook was in his mouth, how they're biting. Okay, the hook was in the bottom of that fish's tongue. So we know that fish came up from behind the fly, just came up and sipped it in very gently. You can always tell by the way the hook is in them, how they're biting. Okay, let's get ourselves set and get another one before that sun comes up if we can. This fly doesn't look like much, but when it's in the water, it really, really looks alive. It's just wiggling like mad. It looks exactly like the bait that they're eating right now. And uh, 
They're just, you've never fished anything that'll produce fish. The, all types of fish hit these flies. Some of these flies don't necessarily duplicate exactly what they're feeding on. Uh, it's an attractor fly, and they'll take this for a minnow, they'll take it for a leech, they'll take it for dragonfly larva, and many different things. And through the years, we've tested these flies over and over and over again. We run prototypes all the time. We'll take a new fly that's a prototype, we'll run it two full years before we put it on the market. And they're just absolutely the best way I've ever fished in my whole life. Jay Fair's woolly flashers haven't been casually designed. His lifetime of fishing and tying flies have come together in these patterns. Marabou feathers are perhaps the most important ingredient in these trolling flies. Nothing yet manufactured comes alive in the water like marabou. The entire length of the fly is in action, showing life. Jay buys and dyes all his own marabou. It's not run-of-the-mill material, but hand-picked and personally crafted into the most alluring feathers you can put in the water. Jay's marabou breathes when trolled. It pulses over and around the body of the fly and brings scales and tails to life. The wide head of the trolling fly is tied to a specific thickness. The front of the fly, by shaping the water flow, sends the feathers into action. Too much water over the marabou flattens it. Too little, and it doesn't come to life. The reflective body is tied sparse to emulate the midsection of the live bait. The shuck is a sturdy woven plastic that glows rather than shines in the water. Tails to woolly flashers are sparse. Just a few select marabou feathers create a dramatic fluttering end to the fly. Whether you're trying to imitate a minnow, leech, aquatic insect, or other natural prey, the tail is the last thing a fish will see before taking. The variety of vibrant colors woolly flashers come in are time-tested. Jay, not satisfied with colors that come from the commercial suppliers, hand dyes all his own materials. Spending years developing the shades he wanted, Jay colors the feathers to his own exacting standards. His main concern is not with how good they look above water, but how they appear when trolled at depth. Few understand as well as Jay how colors change when under the water. His hues of fish attracting feathers are selected for how they appear below the surface. This fly is made to where it's a little thicker up here in the thorax or chest area. It tapers back to where it has very fine, fine marabou little barbels sticking out here. It has a very fine tail to it. We want to design a fly that will look, have the most action in the water with the least effort by the man on the fishing pole. So we have this fly back there. We don't have to, we, all we have to do is just twitch it a little bit. You can see here in the wind, look. Here's the way it's gonna look in the water. That's exactly the way we want it to look. We want that marabou just to, just to put out all the action it can. All you have to do is keep your rod down near the water, just over the top of the gunnel of the boat and just give that fly a little bit of this is all it needs and it looks absolutely real. So the fly line's just for control, huh, Jay? Yes, it gives you good control. Plus it puts you way, way behind the boat. Uh, 
We have lots of people using uh, monofilament, which works all right. Uh, they'll put a monofilament on, a couple of split shot, and go back 100 feet. And they catch quite a few fish also. But it's not as deadly as, what, as the rigs we're using here. It's really the right flies combined with the right line that makes for a complete system. The two work together to present an extremely lifelike imitation of live prey. So what kind of line do we got on here, Jay? And what's the purpose of the fly line behind it? Well, the fly line's floating. And the reason I like to use a fly line because I can see it laying out there on the water and I know where that fly is. Like right now, we're coming into this tule patch and I can put this fly right on the edge of these tulies by watching that line. Another thing, you'll get You'll get used to this fly line, and if you watch it very close back there, it's going to twitch. It'll just barely move when that fish picks it up. We've got two fish on here right now. We've got a little breeze on the water. Things are starting to pick up a little. Think you'd have the same luck with lures? Jay, well, I'll or? tell you what, boys. It'd be awfully hard to fish lures in here because you're fishing them really slow and uh, you'd be hanging up, you'd be catching tulies and all that things. With this floating line, I can put that right there where I want it. And uh, certainly, you'd catch a few fish in here on lures probably, but when you make these sharp turns like these fish love, well, that lure usually goes to the bottom and you hang it up. We're just inching these flies along. We're just making them flutter down there. This is a pretty nice You're not fish. That small, Jay. Well, <laughs> For here. yeah, they're nice trout towards the average. This one here is about four pounds. Wow! Did you ever see such beautiful trout in your whole life? You know, I've been fishing these things all my life, and I just—I've never got used to it. Every time I see one, I get excited. It's just like I've never been before. Beautiful trout, beautiful trout. Nobody around us. We got this whole little area to ourselves. Okay, we're gonna bring this trout up. Now this is absolutely just a beautiful proportion fish. He's fat, he's very, very healthy. He don't have a blemish on him anywhere. He's a little bit mad, he doesn't want to come in. Come here, baby. Come right over here. You gotta get them just right in order to pick them up because they don't want to pick up that easy. They get to flopping around. Ah, oh, we got him. I don't want to hold him out of the water too long here, but look at this. Here, I got you. Isn't that a gorgeous rainbow trout? I'm gonna grab him here now. I'm gonna take the hook out of him. I got him here laying in the water. Yeah, he's great, see? Getting your fly at least 100 feet from the boat and putting it exactly at the right depth are keys to Jayfair's trolling system. To do this with the gear you're using, take a look at the graph and envision how you'll be set. Lead core line, really lead wire surrounded by a polyester shell, is the best way to get the fly down. The type of main line you've selected will change the amount of lead core you need because different main lines vary in how fast they sink. Jay's preferred system, the one he believes is least likely to spook the fish and give his flies the most action, is a fly line setup. The rig consists of a tapered floating fly line of 80 to 90 feet, followed by 15 feet of lead core and a 15 foot leader. This should put your fly at between 6 and 8 feet deep when trolled from 1 to 1.5 miles per hour. 
Increase your length of lead core to 30 feet and you should be trolling your fly at about 15 feet. You can change your depth in these ranges by changing boat speeds and trolling patterns. Monofilament on a spinning reel, around 10 pound test, sinks quicker than a fly line. Less lead cores needed to reach the same depth. 15 feet of lead core following 68 feet of mono will get you about 10 feet deep. 30 feet of lead core following 68 feet of mono will put you around 20 feet deep. If you're going much deeper than 20 feet, you'll need at least three or more colors of lead core and no main line, just follow the lead core with backing. To figure your depth using straight lead core, remember it comes in color-coded 30-foot sections, 10 colors to a spool. Two colors, or 60 feet of lead core, put your fly down approximately 12 feet. Use this as your base and add one color of lead core for each additional six feet of depth you're after. Four colors get you 24 feet, six takes you down to 36 feet, and so on. We're using 15 foot of eight pound test leader. Uh, that seems to be more efficient. If, uh, if you were just fishing lead only, why, you'd have to use quite a long leader because you need to get behind a boat at least 100 feet. And it's just very, it's, it's, you just have to get behind that boat because these fish don't let you run over them with a boat in this clear water. They run out from under your boat and you've got to get back there far enough to where you're not scaring them. Now, Dave, if you, if you feel the least little drag, if you've got a little piece of moss on there, a weed or anything like that, even if it's a quarter inch long, they won't take it. They absolutely will not take it. And that pretty, goes pretty well with all types of fishing. Now, the fly line that's right up here in front of us, Jade, that's so we can see what we're doing and have a little control over the line? Yes, we can put this line anywhere we want it. See, we know exactly where it is right now. We're going to make this turn right here, and uh, it's sort of like driving a semi-truck. The man that runs the boat is going to put that fly right there on that point. Uh, of course, if he turns too tight, he's going to hang it up. And if he doesn't turn tight enough, he's not going to get it where it wants it. But we're coming in here just about right now. Now, you really want to get yourself prepared because he's going to be really hard to hook if you take him here because your line's way back over there around the bend. It's not uncommon to hook a fish like this and have him jump off the side of the boat and you'll say, look at that one, and I'll say, yeah, he's on the end of your line. That's just because we're in such a tight circle. <laughs> now, when we come in here, we're going to get you as close as we can. There he is. We've got one on now. We're going to take him out. Uh oh We're going to take him out into the lake now. Hang on. Hope it didn't snag up. His mind is pretty close. Nope, just keep her coming. Keep your rod down on that side, and you're going to go over the top of me. You picked this fly up extremely easy, did. Really easy. I have, uh, Dave, I have people in the boat. A while back, I had a gentleman, and uh, when I have customers, I usually don't fish, they fish, and he said, no, I want you to fish, because I want to watch you. So he fished with me two days, and the first day I caught 11, and he caught one. Well, then he got onto it. See, it's going to take a little while to get on and know when you've got a strike. And the next day, well, I think he caught eight or nine. <laughs> You always want to watch your drag. Don't get it set too tight. More fish are lost with a tight drag. They'll just literally break you off. This is a much, there small, goes. This is a much smaller fish here. We're just going to bring him in here and release him and get rid of you. What you want to do is just play them nice, play them tight. Don't let them bounce the tip of your rod on you. They get to bouncing that tip, you're going to lose them. But every time they bounce it, they get a little slack. Out here in our western lakes, we get a little spoiled. And it wouldn't matter what lake we're fishing. It has no bearing on it at all. Your lakes all just about have the same type of feed. That little fish probably weighs 
Okay, we're gonna get him off here. Can we hold the pole for you guys? We'll keep him in the water here so we won't hurt him. He's still for a rainbow trout, he's not that bad. Sort of twist him just a hair like that, and we're ready. And there he goes. As you can tell, there's a lot to be learned about this trolling system and fishing in general by riding along with Jay Fair. Our volunteer fisherman, Dave Wolfley, has been with Jay all morning and is just catching on to how the whole thing works. No one was counting fish on this trip with Jay and Dave, but somehow everyone knew who was ahead. Like any dedicated guide, Jay wasted no time in getting the lines back in the water. Without any hesitation, Jay was fishing again and talking about the unique flies and lines he's developed. The only reason we go in a circle is because if you went like this, they'd hit it on the way back and you'd have slack lines. And what you do is pull it in just a little and go back in a little circle and that keeps that line perfectly tight all the time and that's the only reason. There, you've got him. Good hit. We're taking him out in the lake now. Well, he's fighting good. Keep your rod down. I'm going to get on the gas to give you, to tighten him up. Yeah. See, I can't come in. See, we're cross lines now. Yeah. So what you do is, when you hold that rod down, when you lifted that rod, you went up over my line, okay. see? Yeah, it was right tight close to those tulies, huh, Jay? Oh, yes, he's right on the roots of those tulies. Well, he hit pretty good. He did? Yeah, actually. That's great. Okay, you ready for me to stop the boat? Sure, I got him pretty good. All right, good now, now you're going to get a little slack when I let up on when I stop it. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, your drag's okay? I think so. You did a great job of hooking that fish. There might be some hope for you after all. <laughs> See what we did there? Well, we got loose. One thing about these fish, you don't get into a great big hurry on them. Just take it easy and... Uh, you got lots of time to land them, and now well, if he's another little fish, we'll, uh, when the wind comes good. up, he's not a bad fish. When the wind comes up, boys, we'll start catching bigger fish. The bigger fish are a lot more weary. They're very scared. Yeah, this isn't a little one, Jay. Oh, uh, <laughs> that drag's too loose. Tighten yeah. it just a hair. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is a pretty nice fish. Yeah, he'll probably go, beautiful. He'll probably go a little over four pounds. Bring him, but don't let him get in the motor on you, son. I guess I can call you son since I'm 75 and you're only 96. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nicer fish. A whopper. This fish will probably go close to five pounds. A lot bigger than that little one you caught. Oh, quite. Yeah. <laughs> when you fish with these flies, you get yourself spoiled because they have a tendency to catch very big fish. Fish just love them. There's a little knack to doing that. <laughs> the first time you let me. There now, you got him real gentle. That's it. Sort of stabilizing with the hook. All right. Let me let him go. You want to let him go? Yeah. Are we ready? Oh, he's a good fighter. All right. Isn't that a beautiful color? Did you see that big rainbow down the side of him? Hold Look him up that. straight. Get him back in the water. There. There he goes. That was fun. Oh. <laughs> I guess it really does work, Jay. That was great. Oh. It's a fantastic way to fish. You know, you have no weight on there. You have uh, light poles. Uh, these rods happen to be made out of fly rods, but you can use a light spinning rod to do the same thing. And it's just a great way to fish. You can take some of these uh, smaller lakes that's got lots of nine to 12, 14 inch rainbows. You can take your kids out and they'll have 30, 40 fish mornings doing this. Wow. You have lots of doubles. You get in some of these smaller lakes that's just loaded with these littler fish. You just catch them and catch them and catch them you can. 
I think some people are missing out not uh, using this technique. I had a phone call last week from a man up in, he was fishing Wiki Up Reservoir in Oregon. And he called me up and he says, you know, I just had to call you. I had the most fantastic day today that I've ever had. He said, we're fishing up where the river comes in to wick you up. The German Browns are running five to nine pounds. And we caught 12 over six pounds. Wow. And he said, I just, every time I go fishing, I think about you. You taught me how this method, and I've never been able to catch as many fish as I've been catching the last few years. One of the secrets of Jay's fly trolling system we've barely touched on is boat control. The man running the motor determines what depth and where you're fishing. In general, Jay's speed is right between one and one and a half miles per hour. Whether he's going with or against the wind, he tries to keep his speed to give his flies maximum action. Jay wants his flies only a foot or two off the bottom. He knows this is where the big fish hang. By slowing down or speeding up, he can lower or raise his flies into the strike zone. Jay never wants to troll in a straight line. If he can avoid running over the fish, he'll do it. One technique is to troll a zigzag or circular course. In this way, your line is sweeping across areas where the boat hasn't traveled. Trolling crosswind is another way to let your lines drift off the boat's track and cover virgin water. Don't troll directly into or out of the wind. According to Jay, big fish don't like a fly or a lure traveling a straight course. Okay, so Jay, we want to be looking for structure, but as well we want to be looking at the depths and the thermocline and, and the temperature oh. of the different water. <laughs> the temperature means probably more than anything. When, uh, like I said, about three weeks ago, this temperature up here was in like 68 to 70. Those fish, they don't like that temperature of water. Some lakes climatize themselves to a little hotter water and the fish get more used to it. But generally, the perfect ideal temperature is between 53 and 58 degrees. Now, different fish are different. Bass like, you know, 62 to 68, but these trout like 53 to 58. And uh, <clears throat> if you find the food, you find the right temperature, and you have the right conditions, cloudy weather, wind, or something like that, while you're in those fish. If you find the food, you're gonna find the fish. And of course, structure means everything. Fish love structure. Down at the other end, we might get to go down there and try that. Uh, they'll hang on a ledge where it might be eight feet deep, the ledge, and it might drop right into 20 feet. They also like that because they feel secure with just a few, just, they can swim just a very little ways and they'll be back in deep water. Another point that I want to make very clear, you could have miles and miles of shoreline and you don't have miles and miles of fish. There are certain areas like this area here, the fish like real well. There's another little area back up here they like. So what you do is you go into an area and if you're there at ideal conditions and you're not catching fish, then you, could, you should move. Because sometimes you can move 400 yards and get into them. Sometimes you have to use a mile to get in. You'll find Jay fishing in similar locations, no matter what body of water he's on. These are places where he consistently catches fish. Early, most often very early, you'll find Jay in the shallow water. He knows really big fish are nearly nocturnal and come up out of the deep to feed only in low light. Shallower water is also where you'll find a good share of the feed. Insects, minnows, leeches, and other aquatic life thrive where the sun penetrates fully to the bottom. If there's a weed line, you'll find Jay on it. Weed lines and weed beds hold feed and other significant cover. 
There are all kinds of rock structures in most lakes. If you find the points, drop-offs, and ledges, chances are you'll find fish. Rocks make great ambush points for feeding fish. They can charge out from behind or from below. Submerged river channels, creek beds, and canyons all provide deep water access. Big fish reside in deep water. Springs and creeks are often cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter than the main body of water. Big fish will seek them out and gather in these spots where the water temperature is ideal. Finally, you'll always find Jay keeping an eye on the birds. He knows if the birds are feeding, fish will be feeding as well. You normally have <coughs> four different feeding periods a day. You'll have two majors, which lasts about an hour and a half to two hours, maybe a little longer, according to how much feeds in the water. The more feed that's in the water, the shorter bites you're going to get. Makes sense, they're going to fill up. Then you have a couple of minors. So if we had these fish that came on about three o'clock this morning and quit about a half hour after daybreak, they're not going to come back on again until around noon. And then that, that minor feeding period will probably last half hour to an hour. So it's very important that you're there when these fish are feeding. But big trout normally are pretty lazy fish. They like to get easy food with the least calorie output, with the least effort. And what you're trying to do in this fly is get the most action out of the least effort. We want just the slightest twitch to make that tail move, where it looks alive. We want to make it look alive. And that's, that's what we've done here. At the end of Jay Fair's trolling system are his flies, and any way you look at them, they are spectacular. He's created the patterns and even the materials and colors that he knows will catch fish. We had Jay go over a few flies and explain what they imitate. He's pretty fussy about the way he fishes, but even more so when it comes to flies. They just love this color. My dad taught me something years and years ago. He was a great fisherman. The time I was six, we were out camping out, fishing every spare minute. He taught me that copper, that copper is an amazing material for fish. Fish love copper. So we have a few strands of copper to pick up that light just a little bit, as you see. Here's an extremely important fly in our fly line. And you'll say, well, if it's so important, how come you weren't using it this morning? This fly is designed to imitate thread fin shad, uh, white shiners, pond smelt, anything that's white, we use this fly. We have a hot one here. It's tied exactly the same way. The material is different. This is orange marabou with a sparkle orange body. This fly works real well in a little off-colored water. This fly also works real well in high wind. We call it the all-around best. It's not really our all-around best, but this has been in our line for so many years, and it's, it's a real popular fly. The reason this fly is the color that it is, German Browns love bright yellow and bright orange. We use this fly a lot when we're fishing in a lake that's got a lot of German Browns in it. Another important factor here when most of your flies get below 35 feet, they change colors real rapidly. The deeper they go, they turn coal black. There's only a few colors that'll stand up to that depth. And that one is yellow and one in orange. This fly is what we call our olive bleach. It's a little off color for a leech 
but when it's in the water it looks a lot better. When they get on this little fly, they really hit it good. They'll hit this fly for dragonfly larva. They'll hit this fly for leech. They'll hit it for a little minnow. So again, it's one of those attractor flies that they hit for many, many reasons. It's what we call, we dye this, this feather up and it's hot orange. Fluorescent orange, or hot orange. We use this in the late fall, it's excellent. In the early spring, this fly is excellent. The reason it works so good at that time of year, along in December, these fish start thinking about spawning in March, February or March, according to the water temperature. They won't spawn and lay their eggs until the water reaches 48 degrees. So we'll start using this fly in December. I don't think they hit this fly to eat it at all. I think this is an attractor fly and they're in the mood to just grab it. This fly here is a very, very important fly in our line. When the water gets a little bit warmer, it takes a little bit of warm water to get your, your leeches real active. Some of our lakes, if you'll watch very, very careful, you get up near your tules and the leeches come out, uh, they're just thick in the water. I was going to try to find some to hold in my hand here and we just haven't had the opportunity to do that. But our big, we have three types of leeches here. We have a little very aggressive cinnamon leech that's only about two inches long. Man, he just wiggles like mad. We have the little black leeches that are about two inches long. No leeches are real coal black, but he's about two inches long. He has just a little brown mixed in. Then we have our giant leeches in this lake, and the average person that sees them never have any idea what they are. Now you've never trolled flies before. That's oh, great. It's a lot of fun. It's uh, no weight, totally free, aren't they? Yeah, it's, it's a lot like fly fishing. You don't have all that weight like down rigging or any big old yeah, lure back don't there. Have bait or nothing. We went around, it's How's really your nice. Drag? It seems like on an average you get bigger fish. The reason for that is that they look so natural to us. You get uh, small fish. See, they're hitting entirely different. Yeah, you're right. Oh, you're in the, they must be just they must be hitting in the side of the jaw. Now oh, they're really coming up and slashing on them right now, they are. That means they're just really coming up and turning. Yeah, and turning on them or slashing on them. Okay, I'm going to turn it loose. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> okay, we're going to go ahead. We'll call that good. We're going in against the wind, so we got to pick our speed up a little to compensate for it. After spending some time in the water with Jay, it was obvious to Dave Wolfley, our guest angler, that Jay really knows what he's talking about. Jay's fame as a fisherman travels the west with everyone he's taken out. Once they give the system a try, they're hooked. Bob Clement is just one angler who's fished with Jay, learned his trolling system for big fish, and got results. We landed over 13 fish and released them. It was just absolutely incredible. Nice sized trout, uh, a lot of fun. And I'm a fly fisherman and, and I like to do all kinds of fishing. And obviously it's a, it's a kind of a thing you can do when the weather isn't conducive to fly fishing. And, and also get some nice, nice big trout. Just like that one there, we just got, uh, got bit, but I didn't do it like Jay said to. But uh, I just had two fish on here. We released those two, and uh, it's really exciting. And it's very, very, another, another spike. Gosh, Bob, pay attention here. Uh, hard to talk and fish. <laughs> it's hard to talk and fish and, and run the boat, but uh, 
I'll tell you what, we've had many people come by today and ask how we're doing it. I haven't even had a bite, and we've uh, landed a lot of fish today and released them. And uh, this adds a whole different dimension to the sport. So I'm a firm believer, and believe me, it's, it's, it's an effective, very effective method. What we're getting the benefit of is uh, 45 years of Jay's experience of fishing and, and working on these flies and materials and, and picking up on that, which we possibly never could do in our lifetime. It might seem like there's a lot to remember when you're trying to learn Jay Fair's surefire trolling system for big fish. But you don't have to do everything at once. Just apply a few of Jay's ideas about fish behavior to your present fishing style and see how they work. Then start to use some of his techniques on one of your next fishing trips. We think the results will make you a believer. Then, if you want to accelerate your success, call and order a few of Jay's lines and or flies. They'll really put you in touch with the big fish. Get him laying on his side, pick him up very, very gentle, squeeze him a little bit with nobody at hand. He's just not ready yet. He's extremely strong, almost broke him in. Extremely strong. That was such a thrill. I had that fly out there. He was about five feet behind the boat. I seen him come up and take that fly. You know, there's just nothing quite like this. Now see how easy you can pick him up. Now careful. I don't want to pick him up like that. Just handle him very gentle. All right. Now we're going to just take these little forks up gentle. Now we've got to get these just right so we won't hurt them, so we can come out, so we can come out on him, sort of twist them just a hair like that, and we're ready. And there he goes. What a thrill, man. <laughs> I've been doing this over 60 years, and I still get buck fever every time I hook a big one. Jay Fair has everything you need to make your own complete trolling system. By calling or writing, you can order a free catalog. Also, ask for any of Jay's Wooly Flasher trolling flies. You can pick the ones best suited for your particular fishing situation. Jay has lead core lines made up to work with your spinning or casting gear. They come in different lengths for the ideal trolling depth. You can also order trolling fly lines that will let you fish exactly like Jay has demonstrated in this video. And if you want, you can even order rods and reels made just for trolling flies. In addition, there's a complete line of fly fishing flies and fly tying materials along with fly tying videos. To order any of these items or a catalog, call or write. Start catching more and bigger fish with Jay Fair's Surefire Trolling System for Big Fish.